uh, for this for this reading of uh, Shikshashtakam by Mahaprabhu and uh, by the commentaries of Anantadas Babaji Maharaj. And we are on page uh, 62. If somebody wants to follow up with reading. And um, we will just continue from where we stopped last time of this verse of uh, Shrima Bhagavatam, where Gurudev was so inspired to share uh, about the bird uh, and the bird's baby, the baby birds, who are unable to find their own food because they cannot fly, so they are totally dependent on the mother. And I'm I want to um, also uh, ask you, please, uh, to share whenever you have a feeling or um, get some inspiration to share. And I'm also trying to, as soon as I see Gurudev, to ask him for his, um, to open his mic and share with us. So. Uh, we stopped at this um, verse, uh, so Andakaji, he told me to just um, start from the middle of the verse, um, and I will do so. O lotus-eyed one, I desire to see you, just as a small bird that has no wings, desires to see its mother. The calf desires the udder of the cow, or the wife desires to see her husband, who has gone abroad. Srila Chiva Goswami comments on the last verse that the baby bird has no other shelter but the mother because it doesn't have its own wings yet and therefore cannot accompany its mother. It is completely helpless, incapable and dependent. Therefore, only the mother can be merciful to it. Others cannot. Others cannot possibly feel as much love and compassion for it as the mother bird. In the same way, Frisha Sura is completely incapable and dependent and feels pure love for the Lord. The Lord's extraordinary compassion on Him is suggested here. It is also described here that Virisha Sura was as eager and anxious to see the Lord as the baby bird is to see its mother. But there is one difference. 
The baby bird is mainly eager to see its mother because of the eatables that she will bring. Not so much for the mother herself. Therefore, Rishta Sura was not fully satisfied with the fi first example and continued by asking, by saying, I am eager for you, as the calf is eager for its mother's udders. The calf is as eager to see its mother as it is for her other, for it sees no difference between the mother and her other. Therefore, this example is superior to the previous one. This calf is a very young one, so the cowherd boy is not yet able to bind it up and keep it away from the mother by force. Cows are naturally more affectionate to their young ones as are mothers in other specific of species of life. I will read that one again. Cows are naturally more affectionate to their young ones as are mothers in other species of life. That is also why this Example is superior to the previous one. Still, Rich Sura was not fully satisfied with this example either. So he prayed, I desire to see you <coughs> just as a sad wife desires to see her husband, who is abroad. It is clear that this relationship is the most intense one in love. The faithful wife will die if her husband dies, regardless of whether she is young or old. So if her husband has gone abroad, she has a strong desire to see him and to please him with her causeless an exclusive service. For she has given her life to him. Similarly, Prisha Sura has no other desire in his mind but to see and serve his Lord. After this, he says, O oh Lord, wherever I may take my birth, as I revolve in the circle of birth and death, let me be, be fr friends with your devotees there. Let my mind not be attached to the robes of Maya in the form of house 
wife, children, and body. Sri Jiva Goswami writes about this in his Priti Sandarbha. One of the spe special characteristics of Srimad Bhagavata is that it contains the story of Vrisha Sura because of Vrisha Sura's pure love of God, which he expressed in the above quote verses. This is one of the special characteristics which distinguishes Srimad Bhagavata from other Puranas and thus it is described in those other Puranas. Although Srima Mahaprabhu is himself the highest truth, he prays <coughs> He prays here for pure, exclusive devotion to the Lord. Mahaprabhu explained this verse as follows. Please, O Krishna, just give me pure devotion unto you. I don't ask for wealth, followers, poetry, or a beautiful woman. This is the end of verse 4 of Sri Sri Shikshashtakam by Jima Mahaprabhu. And as I saw, uh, Gurudev is now also present in the class. And I want to ask Gurudev if he may explain to us how I have this question like how is possible Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is praying to Krishna and what is this mood like he is in the mood of a bhakta or what is the mood behind this um, verses of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Actually, here you see in the Bachelera side there, motherly love and conjugal love. Similar, what is the motherly love we can do with uh, Krishna? And second, is written about conjugal love. When the husband go out, the husband die, then what happened to the sincere wife? So actually, just get blessing from you before marriage. Rade, rade, welcome. <laughs> so, um, for you to catch up, we're just reading the Shikshashtakam, verse 4. Uh, ending and uh, Guru Dev just explained about uh, what we read about the difference of uh, Maturya and Avatsalya Rasa. So we are, we are waiting that he comes back. Hopefully, the connection didn't. Is he still there? <coughs> I think that the relevance of the is Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. is now a little listening after again. 
Okay. So maybe we just continue with um, <coughs> verse five now. Mama. Mama. Or anybody feels this? Yes. It's good, no? O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I have fallen into the terrible ocean of material existence. Please consider me to be a speck of dust attached to your lotus feet. So I read again this fifth verse of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. O son of Maharaj Nanda Krishna, I have fallen into the terrible ocean of material existence. Please consider me to be a speck of dust attached to your lotus feet. Srila Krishna Das, uh, Srila Kaviraj Goswami describes how the Lord recited this fifth verse. Very humbly, the Lord again prayed for the gift of devotion, considering himself to be a conditioned soul. The ocean of Srima Mahaprabhu's humility swelled up once more. And considering himself to be a soul bound up by the Maya of material existence, he recited this fifth verse. This kind of humility is the limit of divine manifestation. And the Lord showed it to teach all the conditioned souls as he came down the staircase of his compassion. The more the living entities had towards the highest truth and bliss through renunciation and worship, the more their experience as individual souls become magnifi magnified. And similarly, the more the Supreme Lord descends to the platform of falsehood, bondage, and misery out of compassion for the fallen conditioned souls. The more his godhood becomes magnified. Again? Mm -hmm. Maybe come yeah, closer. Yeah, yeah, come closer. So I read again. Because it's a very long sentence also. <laughs> it's very difficult. Um, the more the living entities head towards the highest truth 
and bliss through renunciation and worship, the, the more their experience as individual souls become magnified. And similarly, the more the Supreme Lord descends to the platform of falsehood, bondage and misery, the more his godhood becomes magnified. Okay, maybe I try to explain in a little bit easier words. Mm. Maybe I got it, I don't know. So, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ocean of compassion is swelling on and he is considering himself to be very low and bound and by Gurudev's blessings we know that uh, humility is the sign of love becomes deeper. So the devotee shows great love for Krishna and Krishna can attract by this love and comes closer to the, towards the devotee. And that closer the Lord comes to the devotee, that more the love of the devotee again rise. And again he becomes more closer. I think this was the... We read it again and you... Uh, Maybe you say uh, something more. The more the living entities head towards the highest truth and bliss through renunciation and worship, the more their experience as individual souls become magnified. <coughs> so, present, no? The, their individual soul becomes more present and clear. And similarly, the more the Supreme Lord descends to the platform of falsehood, he will come towards the fallen souls, the more his Godhood becomes also present. There is nothing in this world which can, which can make the waves of the Lord's transcendental desires rise so high as the love of His devotees. And because of this, He descends more and more down the staircase of His compassion. In Srimad Bhagavata, we can see that the original personality of Godhead, Sri Vajendra Nandana, was stealing and eating butter and yogurt from the house of the cowherds and cowherders. When thus a human being committing thief, committing thief stealing, he will be blamed to be a stealer. <coughs> as soon as he is very greedy after something and he cannot get that thing through the normal channels, <coughs> his intense greed then takes his intelligence and his sense of discrimination away and he steals it. So a person who has a sense object, who is very greedy after this sense object, after a while he will just have so much desire 
he will just steal it if he cannot buy it or get it anyway. <clears throat> Although Krishna is eternally satisfied in himself, he was so much captured by the love of the people of Braja that he came so far down the staircase of his compassion as to even steal butter from their houses. Similarly, by considering himself to be a conditioned soul, Sriman Mahaprabhu has now come down the staircase of compassion simply to teach all the people. First of all, Sriman Mahaprabhu says, I Nanda Tanuya, I have fallen in the terrible ocean of material existence. I is the word a female person generally uses upon addressing someone. When a male person addresses someone, it's supposed to be Hey Nanda Tanuya. From this, we can understand that Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu has humbly accepted the mood of Sri Radha. The bhava of Sri Radha is Vibhu, all pervading and supreme. <coughs> and for her, Mahabhav, all other bhavas become manifest. And from her Mahabhava, all other bhavas become manifest. In the pastimes of Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu, an unbroken stream of his relishing of Radha Bhav is flowing. In Chaitanya Bhagavata, for instance, it is said that he was repeatedly listening to the stories about Dhruva Maharaj and Pralad Maharaj from the Bhagavata. Again and again, the Lord carefully listened to the stories about Dhruva and Pralad that were read to him by Garadhar Pandit from Srimad Bhagavata. As the Lord set before Garadhar, he manifested so many moods of love for Krishna. When Mahaprabhu heard how eagerly Dhruva was crying out to Sri Hari, he remembered Sri Radha's passionate love for Sri Krishna. 
Upon hearing how Pralada became victorious over the demons who tortured him and how the poison they administrated to him tasted like nectar to him. Mahaprabhu accepted the feelings of Sri Radha. I am also stopped from serving Krishna in so many ways by my mother-in-law by my sister-in-law by local traditions by family traditions in the house and in the forest and I have to conquer these obstacles I should also consider the poison of the deva ma, ma, no? deformation of a chaste housewife Def deformation um, no glories uh, I, will say, I will spoil all the glories of my uh, house like because the gopis families they have a lot of uh, uh, chastise, uh, chastity, you know, the, for the husband, they have to be very um, dedicated. Mm -hmm. And she is thinking that, oh, yes, I have to actually be dedicated to my husband and my family and my family in law. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I have to serve them. But she has too much love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. So she thinks that, oh, I, no problem. I everything will be defamed or should I take this poison you know, of defamation like that everybody will speak, speak bad about me yes. <laughs> so uh, I should also consider the poison of the defamation of a chaste housewife to be as delicious as nectar In this way, one can understand the first word of this verse. Mahaprabhu accepted the mood of a newified devotee <coughs> in the mood of Sri Radha, saying, Aye, son of Maharaj Nanda, I am your fallen, I am your fallen maidservant, and I have fallen into a terrible prison house of my household affairs. <coughs> Please consider this fallen maidservant to be just like a speck of dust <coughs> on the soles of your lotus-like feet. <coughs> I 
There is another secret in the way Mahaprabhu addresses Krishna here as Ai Nanda Tanucha. <coughs> Tanucha means born from the body. A combination of the father's semen and the mother's ovum. ovum. Does God take his birth in such a way? <coughs> hmm. Does God take birth in such a way? His form is after all transcendental. <coughs> How can he be called born from Nanda's body? In Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Shuka Muni has also said, The high souled Nanda was ecstatic because a son had become born to him. Srila Jiva Goswami writes in his Toshani Tika on this verse. From the words Atmaya Utpane, in this shloka we can understand the meaning of these two <coughs> practical particular words and their mutual relationship. <coughs> For instance, when he say blue lotus, we must first know what is a lotus and what is the color blue. And then we can picture ourselves a blue lotus flower. Otherwise, he cannot know or understand what is a blue lotus flower. Yep, also they are working. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I read again from the verse. From the words, uh, for instance, when we say Nilat Pala, Blue Lotus, we must first know what is a lotus and what is the color blue. And then we can picture ourselves a blue lotus flower. Otherwise, we cannot know or understand what is a blue lotus flower. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, <coughs> O Arjuna, anyone who knows the truth ab about my divine birth and activities will not take birth again 
in the material world, but he will attain me. Sri Pad Ramanujana writes in his commentary on this verse. When one knows the actual truth about my transcendental birth and activities, all sins which are stopping one from surrendering unto me will be destroyed and one will attain me even in this very lifetime through the practice of loving devotion. We can easily understand that Krishna's birth is very special. If anyone who knows it in truth is himself freed from further rebirth. The secret about him being anyone's born son is that only the love of his devotee can cause waves of transcendent <coughs> desire in him. Again, the secret about him being anyone's born son is that one that is that only the love of his devotee can cause waves of transcendental desires in him. Means he can become the son or summon the transcendental. I'm just trying to listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Father Chanan just explained that he can only become the son of somebody who has a real transcendental love for him, right? Can you explain? You're just uh, trying to uh, understand. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The love of a devotee in the parental mood makes him forget all his divine prowess and causes him to take birth as that devotee's son. Rade, Rade. Rade, Rade. Can Rade, Rade. I ask to all of you, or maybe also to Gurudev, if this truth that was mentioned now, that the love of a devotee in the parental mood, for example, <laughs> makes him to forget all his divine progress and cause him to take birth, is that already the secret that needs to be understood? Uh, to, to become, as, as was mentioned before in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, the secret of, of his taking, of taking birth of the Lord. Uh, if we could understand that, that would make us free from, uh, from rebirth. So maybe this is already the answer here that only the love of the devotee can, can cause cause the Lord to do this, uh, uh, to take off.
Yeah. Was that clear? My my question. Because your question is clear, yeah. Because. Mm -hmm. uh, um. One the symptom of prema, Shri Krishna Karshati, means Krishna completely captivated by the sweetness of love. And then such devotees like Nanda or Yashoda, Yashoda Nanda, they love, parental love, Vatsalya, so strong God, it brings Lord as their son and he is completely on the influence of their love and he completely forgetting his um, divine supremacy he, he even could not uh, lift up some small how to say <coughs> something uh, for nand baba on which he is sitting i don't know what's in english chair small chair yeah he couldn't lift because he thinking i'm small boy i'm just Really, very little small boy <clears throat> under influence of their love under influence influence of love of your shoulder he is afraid oh she will caught me i now must run away from this place i just did some crime he broke big pot clay pot with yogurt yes this this krishna karshati this power of his love makes him be greedy it's not just where it to become their son to uh, drink again and again this very sweet prema, Radhe Radhe. Thank When the Lord sees how eager such a loving devotee is too rare. When the Lord sees how eager such a loving devotee is that too rare and too foundle him as a child, he becomes eager to relish that love. And he agrees to become the child of that devotee. Although he is unborn, he then Im imitates the activities of childbirth. Although his transcendental form is actually eternally perfect and self-manifest, actually his body was never made by the semen of any father and the ovum of any mother. Nevertheless, he is eternally known as the born son of his eternally liberated parents, Nanda and Yashoda. From this, we can we come to know the Lord as one who always desires to relish the taste of his devotees, love for him. Therefore, not only the devotees need the Lord, 
The Lord also needs the devotees. To have an exchange of feelings, right? Because love needs object. Yeah. And uh, love, you only you can only give love, no? Is it, love is to give, to give it. Mm. <laughs> Mahaprabhu said, Ai Nanda Tanucha. <laughs> you are eager to taste the love of your devotees. Therefore, not only I need <coughs> you, but you also need me. That's the purpose of this address. I Nanda Tanucha. I have fallen into this terrible ocean of material existence. Surely this world is miserable, hard to tolerate and burning like poison. Bhagavan Mahaprabhu, be the mercy, be the mere chanting of whose name the ocean of samsara dries, and upon merely seeing whom the mankind can easily cross the ocean of samsara and attain the treasure of Prem. Warns all the living entities to be aware the ocean of samsara which these with the with these instructions so mahaprabhu who is if you want to see him you will be free from samsara you just you, want to see him. you, you just see him ah, you see. and then you will be free from samsara and he is warning you He's warning us, giving us a warning. That we should be aware of this ocean of samsara. Srila Prabhupada Saraswati describes the terrible ocean of matter as follows. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, verse 54, it doesn't say which book. O Sri Chaitanya Chandra, I have fallen into the ocean of material miseries where I am swallowed by the crocodiles and sharks of lust and anger and bound up by the chains of wicked desires. Give Give this helpless soul shelter at your lotus feet. Mm. When a soul falls into this ocean of misery, 
he is completely helpless. When one asks, why should you be helpless in this world? Don't you have a mother and a father, sons and daughters, friends and relatives? Why do you feel so helpless then? Then the answer is, my parents, brothers and children, all of them are similarly struggling helplessly in this terrible ocean, being attacked by their six enemies, namely lust, anger, greed, and so on, which are like sharks and crocodiles that are snapping and chewing on them. Without the mercy of the devotees or without taking shelter of Sri Govinda's lotus feet, yogis, karmis and jnanis cannot escape from these sharks and crocodiles. We will give a few examples below. So only by taking the shelter of Sri Govinda we can cross this ocean. When the demigods were suffering from the misbehavior of a demon named Taraka, they came to Lord Brahma, wanting to find a solution to their problem. And Lord Brahma told them, Only a son born from Lord Vishnu's semen can kill the Taraka demon. After Sati Devi committed suicide during Dakshas sacrifice, Sri Bhagavat for Kanto, Sri Bhagavatam for Kanto, she took birth as the daughter of the Himalayas, Parvati, and pleased Mahadev once more with a worship of him. <coughs> but until now, Sriman Mahadev is fully absorbed in Samadhi, <coughs> mystic trance. <clears throat> and nobody knows how long it will take before that trance will break. When the demigods will find some way to break Mahadev's trance and to make him marry Parvati, then Tarakshura can be destroyed. On Lord Brahma's advice, the demigods went to Kamadev, Cupid, and begged him to help them to break Mahadev's Samadhi. Kamadev was too proud to admit to the demigods that he was unable to break Yogeshwara Mahadev's Samadhi. So he accepted their request. On the way, Cupid was thinking to himself. Mm -hmm. 
I think it is inevitable that I will perish as a result of my upcoming misdeeds. He, he felt what, what he is doing now is a result of his business. He will be gone, like he, the, he will make a misdeed no? now. So, by this misdeed, what he is going to do now, he will vanish. He is fearing. No, he is fearing. So he, he doesn't want to break uh, Mahadev's Samadhi or try it, because he's thinking he can anyway not do it. I think it's, this is the point. Let me at least once make all the people of the world Acquainted with my powers. <coughs> so let me at, at least once make all the people of the world acquainted with my powers. Everybody should see how powerful I am. At least once. Thinking like that, he realized his five flower arrows on the world, causing all people, including karmis, yogis, and kyanis, to be deluded. No one could remain protected except for those who surrendered unto Sri Hari. This is cooperated by the great poet Tulsidas in his Ram Chitra Manasa. At that time, nobody could remain calm, calm, quiet, except for those who were protected by Rakuvira, Lord Rama. The force of anger even crushed the very powerful sage Durvasa to persect the great devotee king Am Ambarisha. Persecute? Persecute means? Persecute means to like. Kill or. No, to say, like, you have to go to jail. Ah. To go to jail. Yeah. The force of anger even caused the very powerful sage, Durvasa, to persecute the great devotee king, Ambarish. But this great devotee tolerated everything and thus became known for his gravity. Blinded by anger, the very powerful sage Vishwamitra killed the hundred sons of the Brahmana Vashishta but be because of his great devotion, Vashishta was able to tolerate it. Of course, the sage Durvasa and Vishvamrita were not angry as ordinary people in the mood of ignorance are. But they became angry for a special purpose. They wanted to teach all the practicing 
devotees of the world, how powerful the sharks and crocodiles of lust and anger, which are swimming in the ocean of material misery, are. Without taking shelter of the devotees who have surrendered to the Lord's lotus feet, it is also not easy to conquer greed for wealth and so. Once upon a time, Lakshmi and Narayan had a loving quarrel with each other. And Lakshmi Devi said, The people of the world desire me, wealth, more than you, God. Lord Narayan said, All right, let's test it and see. Come along with me and use all of your powers and we will see who will win. Lord Narayan went to a Dharamsala non-profit guest house dressed, dressed as a sadhu and began to perform a very sweet kirtan there. The honor of the Dharamsala became attracted to the kirtan and said, O Sadhu Baba, please bless me by doing kirtan in my Dharamsala for a few days. The disguised Lord Narayan said, I will do kirtan in this particular room, but I won't go to any other room, even if you told me to. The owner said, No, no, stay in the room as long as you like, no matter how much money other pilgrims will offer me, I will not give this room to anyone. Kamala Devi Lakshmi understood Lord Narayan's plan and she disguised herself as a princess asking the honor for that particular room in which Lord Narayan was staying. The honor told her one sadhu is doing kirtan there. Please take another room. Kamala said no, I like this room. If you send this sadhu to another room and give it to me, then I will give you a thousand rupees a day. The owner said, one thousand rupees a day? All right, just wait. Let me speak with that sadhu. The owner then went to the sadhu and told him, Maharaj, for a special reason, you will have to leave this room. Lord Narayan then understood that Lakshmi had come and said, but you told me that you won't give this room to anyone. 
Now why are you telling me to leave? The owner replied, You see, Maharaj, we are worldly people. A princess offered a thousand rupees a day for this room. What benefit will you have if materialistic people like us will suffer such a great financial loss? Tell me. I will give you even a better room than this one. Please go to the bathroom. The sadhu said, uh, please go to the other room, to that room. Sorry. <clears throat> that sadhu said, My dear honor, you told me personally that you won't give this room to anyone, no matter how much money was offered for it. Why are you now getting enchanted by this financial offer and sent me away? The owner replied, Maharaj, how can I know that someone could offer me a thousand rupees a day for this room? <laughs> we are ordinary people. We cannot give up our enchantment by this amount of money. What is the harm for you if you move to another room? Therefore, do not insist and go to the room that I point out to you. Otherwise, I will throw you, or I will throw your belongings out and force you to evacuate the room. When they saw this, Lakshmi and Narayan both disappeared. Lakshmi Devi had one. Sri Narayan said, Devi, now let's go to another place. If you win here again, then I will be completely defeated. Now Lord Narayan went to the house of a great devotee in the same disguise. When the devotee heard the kirtan there was no limit to his bliss and he very respectfully prayed to the Lord to bless him by staying in a room in his house. So that he could hear the kirtan for a few days. The sadhu said, But if anyone wants to rent this room, even for a lot of rent, you should not give it. I want to stay in this room. The devotee landlord said, No. I won't give this room for even 10 million rupees. Then Lakshmi Devi came and offered the devotee landlord a huge amount of money for renting that room. But the devotee said, O oh Queen, Keep your money. <coughs> Please go away. There is a great soul living in that room 
from whom I have gotten great transcendental opulence. What is your insignificant wealth compared to death? This time Lord Narayan was victorious. In this way Lakshmi Narayan showed that no one can be released from the ocean of material existence and its sharks and crocodiles in the shape of lust and anger without the grace of Bhakti Devi, the goddess of devotion. Oh, very nice story. <laughs> The story of King Chitra Ketu in Srimad Bhagavata, sixth canto, is a great example of moha or illusion. Bewildered by the desire for a son, King Chitra Ketu married 10 million women, but still he did not get even one son. By chance the sage Angira visited him once, and the king immediately asked him for the boon of a son. The sage Angira explained to the king that a son was simply an illusory blessing that would bring him a lot of misery. But the king couldn't give up this illusion and again asked the sage for a son. So Angira performed a sacrifice to give the king a son and told the king's chief queen who was named Krita duty to eat the remnants of the food offered in the sacrifice. Soon afterwards a son was born to her and the king totally enchanted by the child did not leave her room anymore to see any other queen. The other queens began to burn in the fire of envy and finally killed the baby by poisoning it. There was no limit to the king's misery and his lamentation. Some time later, Angira came back to the king's palace along with his friend Narada Muni. The sage Angira was so powerful that he could make a dead baby speak spiritual knowledge that destroyed the king's delusion. Mm -hmm. 
The king thus gave up his enchantment with family life and became a great devotee by the mercy of his sages. The same thing counts for our anarthas, such as Mada, pride, out of delusion. There is no other way to become free from the crocodile and snakes of lust and anger which freely swim in the ocean of material existence than to take shelter of the process of devotion which finds its origin in the mercy of the great devotees. <coughs> In the following song, Srila Narutam Das Thakur explains how we can make these sharks and crocodiles from enemies into great friends and assisting by engaging them in the Lord's service. <clears throat> I will engage lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, and pride, all in Krishna's service. Thus I can defeat these enemies with a blissful heart and easily worship Govinda. I will engage my lust, my lusty desires in Krishna's service. My anger towards those who envy his devotees my creed in desiring to speak about Hari with the saints, my illusion when I cannot attain my beloved Lord, and my intoxication by singing Krishna's glories. Otherwise, lust will be an independent desire that always breaks up the path of devotion. being an abode of sin. But what can lust and anger do to the practicing devotee when he is in the company of saints? Amongst the six aforementioned Enemies, Srila Narutam did not mention envy. For the Srimad Bhagavata opens with the words Nirma Saranam Sadham, the path of devotion is for none 
envious saints only. An envious person cannot tolerate another person's superiority. In whomever's heart there is matsarya or envy, there is also his wife, Pratishta, the desire for distinction. From the union of this couple, <laughs> the twins, Himsha and Suya, violence and jealousy are born. The terrible dancing of this demoniac family will crush all good qualities in the heart so that the light of devotion cannot shine in it anymore. Beautiful family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will say again. So the, pa uh, the starting is the uh, envy and with envy comes uh, desire for distinction. Pratishta. <laughs> like I want to be somebody. Yes. And they too, they don't come along, they take their two children, twins, violence and jealousy. <laughs> and they will dance and destroy the devotee devotion in the heart. The living beings who have fallen into the ocean of material existence are bound hand and foot by the chain of their sinful desires. These are not ordinary ropes for binding. These are real, living, and terrible chains. On the bank of a big river was a village where almost everyone could swim. There was a village on the river and everybody there, almost everybody there, know how to swim. Because the village was often flooded. During a flood, the people usually held on the floating pieces of timber to save themselves. One time when there was a flood, the people saw something black floating downstream which looked like a blanket. One person swam to it and held it held on it held on to it. While his components on the shore said, let go of this thing now. You can, you can stand there. You can st stand there. 
the people replied, Brother, I've let go of the blanket, but the blanket doesn't let me go. Okay. Actually, I was, it was not a blanket, but a half dead beer that was a, a beer, a bear, a bear, a bear, yeah, sorry, a bear, grizzly, something. That was fl uh, flooding in the river, in the hail and rain. When people catch holding of it, they may think that they have found some support, but actually the beer will catch firm hold of them instead. <laughs> if people will see the something is in the river and will think, oh, I can catch it, then I will not drown. And then they go and catch it, but then it, it will bite, the beer will bite them. And he will catch and hold them very strong. <coughs> the bear, the well, how you pronounce bear? Bear. bear huh? <laughs> the bear represents the sounds, touch, touch, uh, forms. Taste, smells that are flooding down the river of material existence. The people who are bound up by Maya consider these sense objects to be most desirable and enjoyable, but then they are firmly catched by these attractions that will bring them only sorrow, diseases and the three kinds of material miseries. Srima Mahaprabhu said, O Nanda Nandana, actually, I am your eternal servant, but I have forgotten your lotus feet, and I have become bound up by Maya. What a miserable condition. Chaitanya Chaitamrita states, <coughs> A living being has forgotten that it is Krishna's eternal servant. And because of that fault, Maya has bound him around the neck. But when he worships Krishna and serves his Guru, the net of Maya will break and he will attain Krishna's lotus feet. Hmm. 
One may ask here if the living beings are Krishna's eternal servants, then why and when did they forget Sri Krishna? It is possible for a Krishna uh, is it possible for a Krishna conscious person even to forget Krishna? The answer is given by Srila Chiva Goswami in his Param Atma Sandarbha. There are innumerable spiritual souls and they are the marginal potency of God. There are two classes of them. One class is favorable to God from beginningless time. And the other class is turned away from God from beginningless time. The first class is naturally full of knowledge and the other is without knowledge. There is no other way for those souls who are conditioned by Maya in this terrible ocean of material existence than the grace of Sri Krishna or his devotees. Therefore, Sriman Mahaprabhu considers himself to be an ordinary conditioned soul just to teach all living beings and he prays to Krishna. Krish, uh, na, kripaya tava padakanchakankacha stita ta stita tuli satram pichintaya. Please consider me to be a mere speck of dust at your lotus feet. The first word he used is Kripaya. There is no other recourse but mercy. Although sugar cane is naturally full of juice, the juice cannot come out without squeezing it. Similarly, God is full of the juice of mercy. But without the devotee's eagerness, that juice will not come out. The Lord must therefore be worshipped with great eagerness. But success in sadhana is not only depend on a great amount of effort. Only when the mercy descends, 
the devotee can be blessed with the full perfection of love of God. Lord Brahma says to Sri Krishna in Srimad Bhagavat that those who uh, that those who await the mercy of God will inherit his lotus feet. Those who wait for the mercy, like they don't think that they can attain Krishna by their sadhana, but they're patiently praying for mercy, then they really get his lotus feet in, the, in uh, as their property. Lord Brahma said, O oh Lord, you are the ocean of all auspicious qualities. Those who silently tolerate all the reactions to previously performed acts with an unattached mind and continue to offer their obeisance unto you with their bodies, minds and words will inherit your lotus feet just as the sun inherits the wealth of his father. <coughs> Hmm. Yes. So actually it's already time, huh? We are at the end of the verse, but I think it's good and to stop here. <laughs>